So this is the Flow flat bottom pour over coffee dripper from Varia and Karasu. And basically how it works is it's this stainless steel dripper and inside it's got this little screen on the bottom, which controls in theory how fast the coffee is gonna flow through the dripper. And you can pop this bottom off, take this fancy little screen out, choose another one, throw it in, put the top back on, and in theory, you have a dripper that flows in a totally different way than the one that you started with. Pretty cool. Does it actually work? At first, I didn't think so. We're gonna get there. It comes in at like 60 bucks US with three screens and then you can get additional screens. Now, two things about it caught my eye and I gotta be honest on this one. The first one is kind of funny. I was at the SCA, the Specialty Coffee North American Expo at Chicago this year, and I walked by the Varia booth. I was looking at their stuff, and then I did like a double take because I saw all these like cool little circle-y things. And that's initially all that sucked me in with this dripper. Then as I started learning more about it, I thought, hey, this is kind of cool. I asked Varia if they would send me one to review. I got a VS3 grinder of theirs in queue for review as well, and they said sure. Second thing that caught my eye was this is a collaboration between them and Kurasu Kyoto, which is a pretty famous coffee shop in Japan. And they've done a lot of really cool stuff. Every so often they release a collaboration dripper with somebody. A couple of years ago, they released these black waves, which I should have bought one and I didn't. Kurasu, if you're watching this, I would love to get my hands on one of those waves. It's like my dream dripper. But as soon as I saw they were involved in this project, I thought that's cool. I would love to check it out. Now, now, there are a couple things that make this really cool. First one, obviously, is the adjustable flow rate. Typically, a faster flow rate is going to be better suited to lighter roasted coffees, whereas darker roasted coffees sometimes benefit from slower flow rate. The problem is whatever dripper you buy, typically they have a set flow rate, and if you want something different, you gotta get a totally different dripper. This kind of gives you whatever world you want in the same unit. Second thing I really like, this is made out of stainless steel, whereas a lot of the drippers out there these days, especially fast flowing flat bottom drippers that are coming out lately, seems like there's a lot of plastic in the design. It doesn't totally freak me out, but I know that there are a lot of people out there who, you know, you're trying to eliminate microplastics from the world, that's a good thing. So if you don't want the whole plastic thing, solid option. Also, because it's a double wall stainless dripper, it is actually very cool to the touch. You know, you look at this, think about filling it with water just off the wall, and you're like, what are you gonna do with that once it's full? It's actually very easy to handle when it's hot. So that's great. Also to swap and clean, it's super simple. Like it takes about, I don't know, like 10, 15 seconds to swap filters. So as far as getting a different experience in a short amount of time, that's great. And it uses these standard wave filters. Uh, these are Kalita 185 filters. Some people don't like them, but man, I am tired of needing proprietary filters for every single dripper that I have in my house. It is nice to just have a huge pile of these and be able to use them in a dripper. And one big advantage uh, with this one, as opposed to other ones, I have the Aurea V3 Mark II here. It's got a little bit narrower of a slope, which sometimes when you put a filter into a dripper like this, and you kind of squish it in the bottom and then you put water in, sometimes you'll get an end kind of just like fold in like that, super annoying. And then you got to try and squish it back against the outside with a dripper that has a slightly wider angle. You don't really get that problem in the same way. That's a big plus for me too. Now, as far as taste of this dripper, I want to give a big disclaimer here. I almost didn't even include this section of the video because I just feel like with pour over, with espresso, with coffee in general, there's so many variables depending on how you brew, your temperature, your pouring recipe, the type of coffee you're using, how a specific dripper, especially with this many options, is going to impact taste. Now, generally, I like lighter roasts. I kind of tend towards the lighter end of the spectrum. And I was finding that with the faster filters, screens, I was getting some really good definition, like really good definition out of these brews. I even found it was a little clearer with than this one, which I really like this one. As I was shifting towards the slower flow end of the spectrum, 
spectrum, I was finding that I was getting maybe not quite as defined, but a rounder cut profile. I was A-B-ing them with Sarah, and Sarah was actually preferring ones that had a little bit of a slower flow to them, whereas I really liked the fastest flow screen that I could put in this. I found it was just a hair faster than the Aurea. I did also test thermal stability, and this is one where I wasn't quite sure how it would perform. I preheated both of these, and I did find that they performed very comparably in terms of thermal stability and drop off upon filling, which is good, you know, for a stainless steel dripper to be on par with a plastic dripper. To be honest, I expected a little more drop off, so that was great. As far as the actual change in flow rate, I used the Option O Casa grinder for all these tests. I've really been enjoying that grinder on pour over. And between the fastest filter and the slowest, I found that this one, same recipe, same grind size, gave me a two minute and 45 second brew. This one gave me like an eight minute brew. So obviously too slow to be a really good cup. You would need to coarsen your grind change your recipe a little bit to really work on this screen, which is fine. You have a big range here to play with. You know, you have the fast ones, you have the medium ones, and you have the slow ones. And they all give you slightly different rates. One other thing that I thought was cool, as soon as I saw this, I thought, I wonder if you can brew without any screen in there, or is the bed of coffee actually just gonna fall straight through and in, into my craft? You can actually brew bottomless with this, which I thought was great. It didn't drip out quite as cleanly. It kind of went around to the edges and dripped off the edge here. Not really a huge deal. And it did flow about as quickly bottomless as it did with this fastest filter here. So. If you're curious about that, you can try that. Now, some cons on this dripper. I always try and find the things that are gonna annoy people when they get a product. And every product has them. There's always compromises. I just try and show you what they are. One really minor thing, I found that when I was done my brew, particularly with the slower flow rate filters, I would find there would be a little bit of coffee that would kind of just be trapped in between the filter and the screen. It would just kind of be trapped in there by surface tension. Not really a huge deal unless you're opening it up and changing the filter, in which case you get some coffee drip out onto your hands or your counter or whatever. One other little con, this is not a huge one, but it's gonna bug some people I know because it bugs me a little bit. With the way this is designed under here, if you have a carafe that has a little pointer spout on it that doesn't kind of dip down. This is a fellow mighty small carafe. This lip here is gonna hold your dripper up on a little bit of an angle. It doesn't sit totally flat. It's just kind of annoying if you get bugged by little things like that. There is one big one that really did catch me off guard. I used this dripper for a while and <laughs> I was finding that I was getting pretty close to the same flow rate, no matter which of these bottoms that I tried. And I was like, what is going on here? Either this does really not work as well as they intended, or I'm doing something wrong here. And I was doing something wrong, but it's not obvious. When you get these wave filters from Kalita, one of my pet peeves with them is when you take a filter out of the top, it's got a very different characteristic than when you take it from the bottom. You can see this one has a much taller shape, much more defined bottom. This one is a lot wider and it's got a much rounder bottom. And really it just comes down to how they package them. They stack them and the bottom stack is a lot wider than the top stack. I always pull from the bottom just because I find it a little easier. I find if you pull from the top, it gets a little weird. Sometimes you bend the filter coming out, whatever. I pull from the bottom. So I'm using these wider filters first. And when you put the wider filter in here and you push it down to kind of where it feels natural, that is gonna be like an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch above the actual screen. And over the course of a brew, it will actually stay suspended 
like that, it won't actually sink down until it's contacting the screen. So what's really happening is if you are pulling from the widest end of the stack on Kalita Waves and you're using your filters, until you get down to this narrow part of the stack, the filter is gonna be floating there and it's gonna be basically giving you the same rate as a bottomless flow. And what you actually need to do is when you are inserting the filter, you need to make sure it's pressed down actually against the screen. And you can actually see the difference here. See how it's seated in there? I don't know if you can see that. Quite a bit more deeply than it would be otherwise. Like the natural fit is kind of like right about there. If you just put it in and pre-wet and you can actually push it down quite a bit more. And you need to do that when you pre-wet, otherwise the screen isn't gonna be doing anything. You're just gonna be getting the same as if there was no screen on there and the screen is not gonna affect your flow at all. Once I figured that out, I started getting different flow rates, but I could see how somebody could get this. You could be pulling these off the bottom, tucking them in, pre-wetting, assuming that it's gonna settle down once you get your coffee in there and all your water in there, and the screens don't ever actually end up impacting your brew. I don't know if you wanna consider that a con or not. It is an FYI as you're using this thing. Also price, it's a little bit more expensive. 60 bucks is a lot for a pour over coffee dripper. It's about on par with the new Aurea. I don't have the V4, but it's a very similar concept. The Aurea only has four, I think, bottoms. Also it's a plastic dripper. So if you really want metal or non-plastic, this is a great option, but it's not gonna be cheap. S-Works Design also has one that's kind of similar with different screens on the bottom. It's actually got a valve that you can turn it all the way off. It's a little bit more expensive too, and it's got plastic components as well. Overall though, I like the dripper. It's really cool. I like how you get drastically different brewing profiles all in the same dripper. I really like this fast flowing screen. This one is probably my favorite. I like that it's got the little uh, Karasu logo in it too. And the fact that you can brew bottomless, that's a nice add as well. So if you just want to tuck the filter in and, and just have at it like that, that's kind of cool too. Or if you want to do a darker roast for your friends and families, coarsen up the grind, go for these slower flow filters. That is a nice add on this. And I think the no plastic thing, that'll win a lot of people over as well. So anyways, I wanna know what you think about this flow dripper. Does anybody really want this? Or is this just like over the top crazy I'm fine with a basic flat bottom dripper. Let me know. I haven't done a ton of dripper reviews either, so if there's specific information, I have a lot of stuff that I didn't include just for the sake of time. Let me know what you wanna see in these types of reviews moving forward, and I will do my best to include it. I got some great reviews coming up, including the Mazer Philos, the X Bloom, the Varia VS3, the Amphim Luna, and a couple surprises too, so make sure you sub for all those reviews coming up. I hope your next cup of coffee is fantastic and we'll see you next time.